For centuries, Christians have had a hate on for the dove sellers and the money changers in the temple, as if they are the cause and not the symptom of spiritual illness. Let us remember, however, that they are doing nothing wrong. Their business supports legitimate temple worship. The temple is not unclean, despite what our Bible tells us about Jesus cleansing it. Although silenced in the gospel, the merchants would likely protest about Jesus' destruction of their stalls with something like, but we've all, always done it this way. And they would be right. But prophets don't preach the status quo. Followed by the scriptural, scriptural authorities of Isaiah and Jeremiah, Jesus' actions are theatrical and prophetic. He might also have cited Amos. I hate, I despise your festivals. In accordance with the prophet's behavior, Jesus first acts to alarm the elite and those who serve them, and then contextualizes how the actions should be understood. When Jesus accuses the temple authorities of making the house of prayer into a den of robbers, he does nothing more than state the obvious that no one else wants to admit. This too is the work of a prophet. In contrast to modern Eurocentric economics, in which wealth and goods are seen as constantly increasing, and no growth is a bad thing, in ancient Palestine they were understood to be finite. Stasis was the rule. Anyone's increase in wealth could only happen at the expense of others' loss. Hence the temple, a place where growing wealth is stored, is a den of robbers. In the economy of limited good, where anyone's game, legitimate or otherwise, is understood to happen only by another's loss, Jesus rightly accuses the temple authorities of robbery because the temple has wealth. What looks like an insult is merely an observation of the elephant in the temple. Well, having got the ethics straight about the purpose of temple worship, its community health, Jesus proceeds to heal it, to make it whole by admitting the blind and the lame, those who are excluded from drawing near. Again, his action is buttressed by prophetic speech, first by a chorus of children quoting Psalm 118, and then by his insulting rebuttal to the rhetorical question of the chief priests and scribes. Have you never read? Did he coach those children? His playing up to the self-aggrandizement in Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself is a kind of just-watch-me moment. You bet, he says to the chief priests and scribes, I'm bad, real bad. His words and actions amount to nothing more revolutionary, however, than pointing out what everyone already knows. When human systems function for their own sake and not for community wellness, they oppress. There are prophets among us today also pointing out the obvious. They can be found in those pointing to emaciating polar bears searching for food in the melting Arctic, pointing to the heat and smoke of forest fires that rage every summer in Australia, California, Europe, and across every region of Canada. This is written in Saskatchewan, and right now eyes smart from the smoke from British Columbia, and in the words of Indigenous elders who repeatedly point to the changes in the animals in the land. The acclaimed 2010 film, Inuit Knowledge and Climate Change, by Nunavut filmmaker Zacharias Kunuk and environmental scientist Ian Morrow, documents how everything is changing, including the position of the sun. At the end of the service, 
we'll share a video clip with you that you where you can see this happening in the judeo-christian cre creation story god creates humankind in god's image like a painter or a poet who makes a rep representation it is a good image a good likeness it is so good in fact that god puts limits on how we are to behave in god's creation we are to have dominion hmm. the word dominion in the nrsv bible is a latinate translation of the hebrew rada and has been the subject of considerable ongoing theological discussion what does dominion over mean if we consider that humankind is made in the image of god then humankind's role in relation to creation is also in the image of god which suggests in the hebrew bible formulation a kingly responsibility for creation in the creation story god also creates the waters land animals fish birds and every living thing human dominion then in the image of god's relationship to god's creation does not authorize the untrammeled use of creation but urges a relationship with creation as co-creator as god is creator the rainbow reminds us that after the flood god promised never again to destroy creation as sea levels rise we must ask whether humankind has volunteered to go back on god's word as other animals become extinct primarily through habitat degradation human animals look on in literal disbelief how could our use of resources have anything to do with the environmental changes around us is it true after all that the environment is a limited good is it also true that whatever we take for our gain results in loss somewhere else have we tragically forgotten our relation to creation have we lost the habit of gratitude let us heed the words of amos who calls for radical repentance a radical turning again through amos god refuses the worship of things as a return on god's investment in us burnt offerings grain offerings instead god yearns that justice and righteousness should be our worship and flow not like a wadi that dries up between rainy seasons but like a river an ever-flowing stream of waters well thanks to jesus we've seen the dying elephant in the temple and it's us i won't repeat what you already know that individual reductions in resource use can make a big difference in addition we need jesus moment an overturning of the tables an overthrowing of the very structures and legitimized habits symbolized by the dove sellers and the money changers upon which our metaphoric temple is based how might we join our voices with those many prophets including jesus to make a change for god's creation how might we live out the dominion god grants us by caring for god's body our beloved earth let justice and righteous flow like an ever-flowing stream Amen and Amen.